Rim, my dear, am I audible to both of you? Yes. Yes. Sir. So, in the previous class, we have completed Henry's law, and I had given some homework to you. Have you solved it or not? I only did few. Did few. Few means how many? In text question one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and here you can see. Yeah, in text seven, questions two. I did. Only all the in text question or yeah. some of. Okay. No, no, all. Okay, what about you, Madhya? Madhya, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. I did a few text questions, not text questions. <clears throat> Okay, uh, listen to me very, very carefully. Uh, whenever you do the question, please make a PDF and send it to um, on coaching's number. Okay. Okay, sir. Is that okay? Thank you. Now see, we are going to start a new topic that is vapor pressure, and very interesting. Very interesting topic it is. Uh, right topic that is vapor pressure. See what is vapor pressure. So the pressure exerted by vapor is called vapor pressure. So I am going to define it a very simple. The pressure exerted by vapor. is called vapor tracer is called vapor tracer this is called basically vapor pressure the uh, the pressure exerted by vapor that is called vapor pressure one of the most important point in this is that there is a container in which you are going to heat this container and in which water or uh, other solvents is present either you can take example of water when you start heating it, there are two types of substances in this. Then this on the surface, on the upper surface, you can call it the surface molecule. This is called surface molecules. And this uh, uh, after surface molecules, below the surface molecules, they are called bulk molecules. So a question arises here is that, which molecules evaporate if you are going to heat it which molecules evaporate the surface molecules or the bulk molecules so always remember as evaporation takes place during evaporation or as evaporation takes place surface molecule evaporates surface molecules evaporates so how does it happen Basically, when you are start heating, the bulk molecules get energy from this heating and it start moving. That means uh, uh, it have some kind of energy. That's why it will move to up and on this uh, upper layer, it is called surface molecules and then it starts evaporating. So surface molecules evaporates because they have higher kinetic energy. They have higher kinetic energy. And due to higher kinetic energy, they have low force of attraction. Low force of attraction. So the, uh, due to these two reasons, uh, low force of attraction, due to these two reasons, due to these two reasons, sur uh, surface molecules evaporates, but bulk molecules do not evaporate. Uh, at the end, you can see bulk molecules will be converted into surface molecules, then evaporate. And this cycle goes on until and unless it is all converted into vapor. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So please write it.
Are you done with this? Reem, Madhya. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Now see, there are two types of container. There can be two types of container. One is open container. If you are heating or boiling water in open container, and another is closed container. Another is closed container. So if you have open container and if you are heating it, then vapor pressure will be zero. There will not, uh, there will uh, not, uh, there will be no vapor pressure. But if it is closed, if it is closed, the vapor pressure will, uh, this vapor will create some pressure. That's why vapor pressure will not be equal to zero in closed container. But in open container, there will be nothing that holds pressure that's why the vapor pressure will be zero and also uh, there will be loss of weight, loss of mass, loss of mass of solvent or water you can take. If you are boiling water and there is uh, the system is not closed, so there will be loss of mass of water if there is water. Is that clear everyone? So vapor pressure in open container will be zero. Vapor pressure in closed container will not be equal to zero. There will be some vapor which exert which will exert pressure. That's why vapor pressure will not be equal to zero in closed container. Is that clear, everyone? Yes. Okay, please let me know when you are finished. Done, sir. Very good. Madhya, are you done with this? Yes, sir. Done. Now, we are going to see factors on which vapor pressure depends. So, write a topic. Factors on which vapor pressure depends. Factors on which vapor pressure depends. So, see, it it has two factor. The first one is that doesn't depend uh, on. So uh, write it with me. It does not depend on shape or size of container. On shape or size of container. So basically, vapor pressure does not depend on the shape of size of container. Whether you take container like this shape or whether you take container like this shape or whether you take container like the, like this shape it doesn't depend on the shape or size of the container it depends upon the nature of substance it depends upon nature of substance nature of substance so see there is a very simple concept between it so what is vapor pressure a liquid that is converted into gas that is uh, uh, that is converted into gas that is bas basically evaporation and that gas or vapor exerting pressure is called vapor pressure isn't it is this clear rim Mad yes. uh, madhya so see what is the difference a liquid which is easily vaporized will exert more vapor pressure as compared to a liquid which is not easily vaporized. Can I say this? Yes. Yes. And also, the liquid which is easily vaporized, that means the particles of that liquid are not as strongly held to each other or the force of attraction between the particles 
are lower that's why it is easily vaporized are you getting my point yes sir so this vapor pressure is all about the force of attraction if the particles uh, the force of attraction between particles are very high vapor pressure will be lower and if vapor pressure will be lower uh, the force of attraction high vapor pressure will be lower up to uh, till this you have to uh, take in your mind and if force of attraction is lower vapor pressure will be higher okay so basically vapor pressure depends upon the force of attraction between the particles now the question is that that which has more vapor pressure which has more vapor pressure the first one is h2o that is water and c2h5oh you have to compare between these two and if you don't have any idea about it please let me know so please solve it So it's C2H5OH. So which has more vapor pressure, C2H5OH? Madhya and Rim, what yes. about you? Sir, I also think it's C2H5OH. Oh, you think? Why do you think so? Why? Because uh, both of you. Yes. Because of hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding. Oh, oh tell me. Uh, you uh, and also both of you. It is higher in weight. higher in weight so basically due to molecular uh, mole when molecular weight increases van der waal force of attraction increases are you getting my point madhya and ring so you can yes. uh, take that reference uh, higher molecular weight higher mo with higher molecular weight mole uh, van der waal force of attraction increases and if van der waal force of attraction increases that means vapor pressure decreases or not because it won't form that much vapor it will not easily vaporize madhya yes sir i get it now yes sir see, uh, tell me does hydrogen uh, hydrogen bond present in h2o h bond present in h2o or not rim yes. and madhya it and is uh, hydrogen bond present in uh, ethanol or not it is there it is there uh, wait a minute please so see basically here vapor pressure of c2h5oh is greater than vapor pressure of h2o so you have told me that both of them form 
hydrogen bonding but still vapor pressure of ethanol is greater than vapor pressure of water right yes so why do why does it so because in h2o there will be uh, basically four side hydrogen bonding in one h2o and in c2h5oh it forms only one or two side of hydrogen bonding that's why the this hydrogen bond makes it more packing uh, packed or the particles between water molecules will be uh, very very high attractive force as compared to ethanol that's why it is easily vaporized and if it is easily vaporized that means vapor pressure of ethanol will be greater than vapor pressure of h2o are you getting my point yes sir very good now see another question a range decreasing order of vapor pressure arrange in decreasing order of vapor pressure we have ethanol then glycol this is the, uh, this is basically uh, common name its uh, common name is glycol and then glycerol ch2oh and then choh and then ch2h so basically this is ethanol this is glycol and this is glycerol so please arrange it in increasing order of vapor pressure can you arrange it i'll try sir so. okay i'm waiting for your answers Dancer. Very good. What is the answer? Which has yeah. more vapor pressure? It's glycerol, glycol, and then ethanol. Is it increasing or decreasing order? Let me uh, ask you again. Which has the most vapor pressure? Glycerol has the most vapor pressure. Okay. See. vapor pressure is inversely proportional to force of attraction can i write it yes the molecule which has lesser force of attraction vapor pressure will be greater so simple c2h5oh here it will form hydrogen bonding from here and it will form from th uh, both sides and it will form from three sides so force of attraction is greater in this so it will have very less vapor pressure and force of attraction is force of attraction is very low in this that's why vapor pressure will be higher so it will be like this ethanol glycol okay. glycerol this is the decreasing order of vapor pressure rim okay so good okay sir so. okay please write it and let me know done sir Rain. Done. Okay. So let's move to the next 
topic that is substances here in this chapter substances are divided or classified into two part that is volatile and non volatile volatile and non volatile substances are of two types volatile and non volatile volatile substance that can that is vapor pressure is not equals to zero that means volatile substances are those substances which exert pressure uh, uh, volatile substances are those substances which has vapor pressure which has some vapor pressure and non volatile substances are those which does not have vapor pressure that means non volatile substances will not exert uh, exert any vapor pressure is that clear to you as for example uh, we can take h2o c2h5oh ch3oh this all are etc this all are basically volatile substance when we talk about non volatile substance it is basically sugar which has a formula c12h22o11 glucose which has a formula c6h12o6 c6h12o6 and next is basically urea nh2co nh2 and nh2co etc these are basically non examples of non volatile substance again there is a graph which is very important for this chapter the graph between vapor pressure and temperature so the graph between vapor pressure and temperature comes out to be like this increasing graph and once it is uh, uh, once a substance is reached its boiling point you can see it will be all in vapor pressure what happens with vapor pressure when you are going to heat or boil water uh, you just give some heat energy and it is start boiling after some time and then uh, with the time temperature increases and the uh, uh, a temperature will come when all the volatile substance will be converted into vapor at a certain temperature which temperature is called that temperature is called boiling point is that clear yes sir okay so please write it and then we will talk about after this we are going to learn about uh, rolls law this volatility volatile and non volatile are very important topic please let me know when you are done with this done sir very good rain rain are you done, done with this yes okay now see another topic which is very important vapor pressure related to this vapor pressure of solution containing pressure of solution containing two volatile liquids two volatile liquids that means you can easily understand both the solute and solvent are volatile that means both will exert some vapor pressure both will exert pressure now see we have a container we are going to make a solution we have a container in which in the first container a is present a, a is basically volatile a is also volatile and container only a is present in this container only a is present that means pure liquid a pure liquid a and in other container in another container we have pure liquid b pure liquid b pure liquid b and this b is present like this b b b
pure liquid B. And we are going to mix it in a bigger container in which A or B both are present like this. A, B, A, B, A, B, like this. Are you getting my point? B, A. Madhya and Rim. Am I audible yes, clearly? Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, now see. What is important? When A is pure, there will be P naught A. That means pure vapor pressure of A. P naught A is what? Pure vapor pressure of A. When B is pure, that means P naught B. Not represents basically pure. P naught B is pure vapor pressure of liquid B or pure vapor pressure of B. But when it comes to the solution in which more than one component is present, there is PA and another is PB. And when more than one component is present, it is called partial pressure. It is called partial pressure of A. Wait a minute. It is called partial pressure of A <coughs> and PB is basically partial pressure of B. Wait a minute. Let me cut this. So you can see this is basically partial pressure of A and partial pressure of B. Is the screen shared? Yes, sir. Now see one more important, just don't write it, uh, concentrate here. If only A is present, what will be the mole fraction? Mole fraction will be one. If you have studied mole fraction, what is mole fraction? Sum of all the component of the uh, sum of all the component, uh, sum of all the component of the mole fraction in a container is equal to one. Since only A is present, so mole fraction will be one. And what is the mole fraction of B? Since in this container, no moles of A, sorry, no moles of B. Since B is not present here, so mole fraction of B will be zero or not. Madhya and yes. In the same way, mole fraction of B here will be 1 because only B is present and mole fraction of A will be equal to 0 because there is no A in this container. And when we talk about here, we know that since two component is present, so sum of mole fraction of 1 A and B will be equal to 1. Please write it and then we are going to <coughs> start Rolls law. Before that, we are going to uh, talk about vapor pressure and boiling point. Please write it. Done, sir. Very good. <clears throat> Maria, you are also done. Done, sir. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> now see. Okay. Let me uh, ask you some question. If vapor pressure is more, boiling point will be greater or lesser. What is boiling point? The temperature at which a liquid is converted into gas. Is that clear? Yes. So if some substance which can be easily vaporized, that means boiling point is lower. Are you getting my point? 
if vapor pressure is lower that means it is uh, taking time or it needs more energy to be converted into gas that means vapor pressure vapor pressure lower that means boiling point greater are you getting my point both of you yes sir so this is the relation between vapor pressure and boiling point and i already told you that vapor pressure inversely proportional to force of attraction this all depends upon the force of attraction if force of attraction between the particles are greater it won't be converted into gas easily that's why it needs more energy and if it needs more energy that means boiling point of that is high is that clear yes sir now rolls law I'm going to define rolls law after henry's law this is rolls law for this container basically we take a in a separate container b in a separate container pure and then mix both the liquids a and b basically you can take a h solvent b h solute when we mix they are volatile and form a solution we are going to introduce rolls law so uh, before right uh, uh, explaining rolls law i am going to write it according to this law so sir boiling point and force of attraction are directly proportional to yes, each other yes yes more force of attraction boiling point will be more you can write it in your own oh, word according to this law in a solution in a solution in a solution that means it will have more than one component but in a, in our syllabus it is defined that only binary solution is in the syllabus that means only two component so in a solution partial vapor pressure of each component or vapor pressure of each component is directly proportional to is directly proportional to to the mole fraction to the mole fraction of that component of that component so it's simple to understand what rolls law see since a or b both present in the solution the partial vapor pressure of a is directly proportional to the mole fraction of a that says rolls law if you are taking b partial vapor pressure of b directly proportional to the mole fraction of b according to rolls law it can be understood that partial vapor pressure of a directly proportional to mole fraction of a now going to remove this uh, proportionality sign so i am taking a constant k i am taking a constant k just don't write it and concentrate here this k is constant and what is the value of k so i am going to explain what is exactly the value of k so see so for finding k we are going to take uh, we are going to take as uh, assumption if a is pure if a is pure that means zeta a will be equal to 1 mole fraction of a will be equal to 1 or not it should be understood that when a is pure mole fraction of a is 1 why it is so since mole fraction of a is equal to number of moles of a upon total number of moles this is the formula for mole fraction yes or no yes yes so you know that number of moles of a and since only a is present so whatever is the number of moles of a it will be equal to 1 so mole fraction of a will be equal to 1 is that clear so here is the assumption if a is pure zeta a will be 1 that means mole fraction of a will be 1 now going to put the value k into 1 and i already told you that when on uh, when component is pure we take p not a in the beginning of the vapor pressure of solution containing uh, two volatile liquids is this understood or not madhiha reem yes sir yes reem so it is very easy uh, you can see when I, i i had drawn the diagram you can see here when a is pure pure liquid then p not a so in the same way uh, the assumption says it all uh, that uh, if a is pure zeta a is equal to 1 p a will be k into 1 and since it is pure k is equal to p not a so pa partial pressure partial vapor pressure say or partial vapor uh, pressure uh, you can call it pa will be equal to p not a 
into z i this is the formula comes from rolls law in the same way you can do for pb b partial vapor pressure of b will be equal to pure vapor pressure of b into mole fraction of b are you getting my point yes sir so this is what rolls law say what it says the p, uh, partial vapor pressure uh, partial vapor pressure of each component is uh, will be directly is directly proportional to the mole fraction of that component please write it write it of oh, wait let me know when you are finished sir can you scroll down yes why not is it enough yeah Done, sir. Done, both of Thanks, you. Sir. Very good. Now here comes the uh, combination of the Rolle's law, like you can call it combination of the Rolle's law. You know that Dalton's law, Dalton's law of partial pressure from class eleven. Total pressure is equal to sum of all partial pressure. This law is from. Class eleven states of matter, gaseous state. So in the same way, we can apply Dalton's law in this uh, Rolle's law. Total pressure will be equal to partial pressure, P A plus P B, and we can also write the value of P A and P B. P A is equal to P not A Z I plus P not B Z I B. Can we write it? So this is the final formula of Rolle's law. Okay. Yes, sir. PT is uh, total. Please. Right? Yes, yes. PT is this. Uh, PT is total press. Just uh, write it. Done, sir. Great. Okay. Uh, Madhya, you are also done. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to give you a question. What you need to do is only you need to calculate uh, how to calculate uh, mole fraction if. Number of moles is not given. So please write down the question with me.
can you do this question it's very easy yes sir okay madhya if you uh, you will not be able to solve it or think anything about it i will explain it let me know okay i am waiting for your reply okay, okay. sir Sir, the partial pressure for both components is zero point zero five. Of both component, that's the wrong answer. Then partial pressure of we need to calculate the engine, so it will have a formula P not B into zeta B, and partial pressure of toluene will have a formula P not T into zeta T. Are you getting my point? Rim. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now this is given, and you need to calculate mole fraction of benzene. This is given. You need to calculate mole fraction of toluene, and at the end, what you need to do total pressure. Total pressure will be equal to sum of partial pressure of benzene plus sum of partial pressure of toluene. <clears throat> okay. Can you do this now? I'll try. Okay. Let me know. Madhya, are you doing it? Solving it? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm. Sir, is the partial pressure of benzene and toluene twenty and ten? No. How did you calculate it? Let me calculate it for you. So this is the formula of P naught B and uh, zeta B, right? This is the formula I am going to use. Since P B is equal to P naught B given as four hundred mm Hg, both of you concentrate here. Four hundred into This is mole fraction of benzene. So we already know that mole fraction of benzene is equal to number of moles of benzene upon number of moles of benzene plus number of moles of toluene. Do you know what is the chemical formula of toluene? Yes or no? Toluene. Chemical formula toluene has a chemical formula that is C6H5CH3. Am I audible to both of you? Yes. Yeah, Madhya. Yes, sir. Okay. See, now what we need to do is calculate num uh, mole fraction of benzene. Mole fraction of benzene is equal to number of moles of benzene. We can use given mass upon molar mass. Given mass of benzene is given zero point seven eight, right? Is it given zero point seven eight or seven point eight? 
is given mass upon molar mass. If you are going to calculate molar mass of benzene, it will be 78 upon same number of moles of benzene. And number of moles of toluene, it is given as given mass 0.92. And molar mass, if you are going to calculate C6H5, CH3, it will be 92. Now I am going to solve it. If you are going to remove this, 100 will be here. 100 will be here. And 100 will be here. Now 92, 92, 78, 78, 78, 78 cancel. Now what left here? 1 by 100, that means 0 0.01. 1 by 100, that means 0 0.01 plus 0 0.01. The numerical value I had, I have given in the question is very easy to solve. Now you can see 0 0.01 upon 0 0.02. Now decimal can be easily uh, cancelled and the mole fraction of benzene is 1 by 2. Now going to put the value of benzene, mole fraction of benzene here. So it will be 1 by 2 and partial pressure of benzene will be equal to 400. Uh, this will be cancelled by 200. And parcel pressure of benzene will be equal to 200 mmHg. Madhya and Reem, is there any doubt in this? No. Now see, no, parcel sir. pressure of toluene will be equal to <clears throat> P0T. That is given as 200 into if mole fraction of benzene is 2, then mole fraction of toluene is 1 by 2 because sum of mole fraction of all the all the component will be equal to one so if this is half it will go and uh, subtract from one minus half it will be half so i just took it directly half and you can see parcel pressure of toluene will be 100 mm hg now coming to the next total pressure total pressure will be equal to pb plus pt that is 200 plus 100 is 300 mm hg isn't it easy yes sir. Please, so please write it let me know when you are done with this Done, sir. Done, sir. Very good. Both of you done. Okay. I'm going to give you another question on the same. You just have to apply the same formula. But be careful. It will be more easy than the uh, previous question. Uh, ethanol plus methanol. These two are mixed. This is three moles and this is basically one mole. This is P naught E. That is for pure pressure of ethanol. That is 50 mm Hg. And this is pure vapor pressure of methanol. That is 40 mm Hg. What we need to calculate? Calculate partial pressure of ethanol and partial pressure of methanol and total pressure. Can you do it? Madiha and Reem. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, please try it.
is there any answer madhya and rim can you tell me the value of pe that is partial pressure of ethanol i'm still doing sir okay very good please do it and let me know Sir, it's it's zero point three zero. Zero point three zero is quite low. Let me know how you solved it. Partial pressure of ethanol will be equal to uh, pure pressure of ethanol into more fraction of ethanol. Have you applied this formula? Yes or no? Tell me. Rim. No, sir. Then which formula you have applied? Ah, um, I divided it. Why did you divide? Like you have done, like P E is equal to P not E upon Z I. Yeah, sir. So yeah, I haven't uh, taught you like this. See the difference. This is partial pressure of A will be equal to pure pressure of A into mole fraction of A. This is the formula. This is the formula I have written there. Sir. So this is given. So and you have been asked this. So partial pressure of ethanol will be pure pressure of ethanol into mole fraction of ethanol. Please do it again. Madhya, any answer from you? Sir, I'm doing. Okay, uh, I think uh, the first part can be calculated. In this time should be calculated. Should I explain it, Madhya Rim? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. See, uh, what is the problem? Yeah. The formula is so easy. You just need to apply it. The application is so easy. See, this is all given, and we need to calculate partial pressure of E. So we already know that from Rolle's law, partial pressure of E will be equal to Pure pressure of ethanol into mole fraction of ethanol. This is given, yes or no? Let me know, please. Yes, sir. So if this is given, uh, you can write fifty into mole fraction of ethanol. Just take it. Mole fraction of ethanol will be equal to number of moles of ethanol upon number of total moles. See, that means number of moles of ethanol plus number of moles of methanol. What is the number of moles of ethanol? That is three, and three plus number of moles of methanol. One four, so I'm going to write it three by four, and just calculate it. One fifty by four. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Wait a minute. Now you can see this is the partial pressure of ethanol, and you can easily. Uh, Convert it into decimal. Can you convert it? Four three zero two. Thirty seven point five. Thirty seven point five. That's good. Now partial pressure of methanol will be equal to pure pressure of methanol into mole fraction of methanol. So what will be the mole fraction of methanol? I am going to calculate it first. 
So mole fraction of methanol will be equal to number one of moles four. of methanol. One by four it is. So what is the value of P not M? It is given that 40 into one by four. That will be equal to 10. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. 10 MMHG. Now, we need to calculate total pressure. Total pressure is equal to partial pressure of ethanol plus partial pressure of methanol. It will be 37.5 plus 10. That will be equal to 47.5 mmHg. Isn't it easy? Yes, sir. So please write it and let me know if you are done with this. Done, sir. Very good. Both of you done? Done, sir. Madhya, you also done? Yes. Now we are going to plot a graph. Now, the graph of this chapter is like this. See, initially, this is pure A. This is pure A and here it is pure B. For pure A, you know that mole fraction of A is equal to 1. Wait a minute. For pure A, is your screen shared? Madhya? Yes, Madiha. sir. Yes. Now see. Yes, sir. For pure A, zeta A will be 1 and zeta B, mole fraction of B is, is equal to 0. And for pure B, mole fraction of B is equal to 1 and mole fraction of A is equal to 0. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Now we know that parse is, see, what is the, uh, this is the graph between vapor pressure and mole fraction, and mole fraction. This is mole fraction. <laughs> see, we know that from Rolle's law, partial pressure of A directly proportional to mole fraction of A. That means vapor pressure, that is partial pressure, is directly proportional to mole fraction. So the graph will be a straight line, yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, in the same way, we can go for this. This partial pressure of A will be uh, B directly proportional to B. So this is basically P not B since A is present here and B is present here. So we, this is P not B. So this graph is for PB. PB is equal to P naught B zeta B and this graph is for PA that is PA is equal to P naught A zeta A and you are going to uh, just uh, mix your wait a minute I'm just going to just slide it this is P naught and if you are going to combine this this is basically total pressure which is equal to PA plus PB. Please write. <clears throat> this is the graph. And if you have any doubt in this, please let me. Uh,
dan Please yes. write it in there. Okay. Rima, are you done with this? Yes. Madhya, you are also done? Yes. Sir. Okay, I'm going to give you another question, which is very easy. The question is basically 7.8 gram of benzene. That is T6HC. Mixed with <clears throat> 9.2 gram toluene, that is C6H5CH3. Calculate is partial pressure of benzene, partial pressure of toluene, and total pressure. Also given. <laughs> Pure pressure of benzene is equal to 200 mmHg. And pure pressure of toluene is 100 mmHg. Please do this question. I want correct answer. Can you do this? Sir, the mole fraction of toluene is 0 0.01, right? And what you just said, this is 7.8. No, no. Toluene, toluene. Again, tell me. That the mole fraction is 0 0.01. Mole fraction of what? Toluene. Uh, are you asking me? Yeah. Okay, mole fraction of toluene will be number of moles of toluene upon number of moles of toluene plus number of moles of benzene. But moles is not directly given. It is uh, mass is given. So with the help of mass, we can easily calculate. You can see given mass upon molar 92. mass of toluene 92 upon 9.2 upon 92 plus this is 7.8 upon 78. Now just cancel it. Decimal 10 will be here. Decimal 10 will be here. And again, decimal 10 will be here. Again, you can see uh, 92, 92, 92, 92, 78, 78 will be cancelled. This is 1 by 10. 1 by 10, that means 0 0.1. And here, 1 by 10, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1. So, the mole fraction will be 0 0.1 upon 0 0.2, which means 1 by 2. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So, please do it. Mm 
there is a partial pressure of benzene a uh, hundred yes and to be so this will be like pb will be equal to p not b into zeta b so it will be 200 into mole fraction half that will be equal to 100 mmh and again pt will be equal to p not p into zeta t that will be equal to 100 into half that will be 50 mmh and again 50 plus 100 that will be equal to 150 mmh is that clear yes sir yes sir please write it Okay, everyone done with this? Yes, sir. Okay. One so minute, sir. Uh, so rest, uh, we are going to uh, study in the next class. That is uh, vapor pressure of liquid containing non-volatile.